Hello and welcome back to another episode of Inside EVs. Welcome here to the south of France and welcome to the Audi Q4 e-tron. In this video, I'll be taking you on a full tour of this car from the exterior and then into the interior. We're gonna look at every button switch and go through the infotainment. It's gonna be a blast. I do have to warn you though, I'm in a parking garage. It was the best solution for audio, so it's gonna sound a little echoey. I really apologize for that. I'm doing everything I can to try and reduce the echo, even by talking a little bit quieter than I normally do. But this video, deal with the echo, because it's our first time that we get to go on an in-depth tour of the Audi Q4 e-tron. And here is the Audi Q4 e-tron. This is such an exciting car because it's Audi's first model on the MEB chassis. I'll give you a quick rundown of sort of the specs, the pricing, everything we kind of know, and then of course we'll go on a tour. Now, typically for these videos, I have a camera operator with me, but you're gonna have to join me behind the camera in this low budget production. Don't worry, the information will still be the same. So this underneath is built on MEB, which is very similar to ID4 and some future models that will be built, but this is the second production MEB car, uh, underpinning, of course, plenty of Volkswagen vehicles to come, and of course, there will be more scalable product architectures to come after this. This particular spec looks amazing, doesn't it, with these bronze wheels and this gray paint. Unfortunately for the US market, we will not be getting this two-tone design. We will just be getting a singular color. I do hope these wheels will make it to our market though because I think they look freaking awesome. In terms of spec on this particular car, this is the Q450. There's two different versions of Q4. There's the 40 and the 50, both of which can be optioned in the Sportback or the SUV. But for America, we will only be getting the 50, the all-wheel drive version in the Sportback. So you won't be able to get the 40, the rear-wheel drive version with the Sportback option. Really, there's not much difference going with the Sportback. The Sportback just cuts the back end down a little bit, makes it a little bit more slopey back here in this little design area. You guys know I actually prefer the full-size hatchbacks. That's why I selected this particular vehicle. And this one that we are going on the walk around is, is a 50, so 77 kilowatt hour battery pack in all of them, which is the big battery in ID4, of course. We only get this in the US right now. Um, and then of course, this one's all wheel drive. So just about 300 horsepower, permanent magnet rear motor, induction motor up front. There's some benefits for this. Uh, mostly the front motor can, being an induction, can be shut off. So the car's mostly rear wheel drive until you get pretty hard into the throttle and then the front motor will help out. Uh, in terms of range, this car has not been rated by the EPA yet, but we're expecting around 250 miles. It really shouldn't be that different than ID4 in my opinion. It's the same drivetrain, maybe with a little bit different aerodynamics. I don't know better or worse, I really don't, but you know, nearest makes no difference, I think. Um, yeah, this thing looks awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> With the brake lights and the turn signals and the Euro spec versions, the turn signals slide across the back. It's really neat. Take a look at these little details here. In terms of pricing, the base price on Q4 e-tron will be $45,000, near as makes no difference. In this particular spec, well, it's hard to say because we won't be getting this exact car to the US, but I can certainly talk about some of the things that we will and won't be getting. My guess is this one's gonna be about, if we equivalent this, this particular spec here, about 55-ish thousand dollars. It's all wheel drive. It's got most options on it. It's really a maxed out car. Um, starting off at the front, you'll notice there's very much a big looking grill, but there's no holes here. So this is a completely uh, flat surface, but it looks a little bit more normal, a little bit more traditional than ID4, I would say. When you see this coming up behind you, you wouldn't immediately think, oh, there's an electric car behind me. And I think a lot of Audi owners prefer this. We've seen this with, you know, the popularity of e-tron. They're honestly everywhere in my town in, in Colorado, of the full-size e-tron, and I think it's just because it's a normal-looking premium car. You can see the Audi logo here is a little bit gloss, and that's because the radar sensor is just behind that. You'll also notice a front camera right here, and then there's also cameras underneath the side view mirrors. And right now, this car does not support 360 degree view camera, but with a software update in the near future, these cars will be unlocked to add a 360 degree view camera. So I don't know the exact reason. I think it had something to do with regulatory approval in certain markets is what Audi said. 
but maybe by the time these reach the U.S. shores, then this will be active. We'll have to see. There is space for cooling on this car. Underneath this grill, there is another grill right through here. And there's actually a shutter. So when there's no thermal load on the vehicle, the shutter will come down and block this entire area behind. This is better for aerodynamics, also better for thermal control. And then when you have a big thermal uh, load on the vehicle, HVAC, battery management system, et cetera, you just lift the shutter up. I mean, you don't have to, the car will do it automatically. And then it has airflow for cooling. Stylistically, I think this car is a bit more styled than ID4. It's a classier car, it's more sophisticated. You have these sort of intricate details all throughout here. And you guys know I'm not a big design guy, but I do think this car looks good and it definitely looks more premium than ID4. For example, I was driving this car through Monaco today around, you know, all the Ferraris and Porsches and everything else going around. And people were actually looking at this car and were like, whoa, that looks really good. A pleasant surprise to see a Q4 e-tron, which is still, of course, I don't even think on sale yet, even here in Europe. It might just be starting. And I think that's quite exciting. This particular one is an S line. Again, I'm not sure how the cars will be packaged in the US, but this means it has the sporty wheels, the good looking things. This one does not have a panoramic glass roof, but this will be standard option in the US. So we just have to imagine what that will look like. I'm sure it's the same unit out of ID4. So in terms of some technical numbers, I mentioned 77 kilowatt hour battery usable. This is a, the exact same drivetrain as ID4 all wheel drive. That means Again, 300 horsepower, really good control. In my drive with it today, if you're interested in how this car drives, head to Out of Spec Reviews because I have a really in-depth driving dynamics video where I took this car on the highway, on the mountains, and of course in the city through Monaco. Let's talk charging on the way over here because this is also the same as ID4. In the US, we will probably have an 11 kilowatt onboard charger, which will be about 48 amps. And then of course, for DC charging, it will currently do 125 kilowatts and it's the exact same charging curve as ID4, no different. It's actually even the exact same charging port. However, this car will receive the same over the air update that ID4 will, that's going to unlock around 175 kilowatts. No one said the exact number yet, but this is my impression that we will see a software update, maybe even before this car hits the shores to unlock the full fast charging. Now currently, and I believe even at launch, this car will not support plug and charge technology, which means if you roll up to an Electrify America station, which is a Volkswagen charger in a Volkswagen charging network in a Volkswagen car, you can't just show up, plug in and start charging. I know they're working on this, but this really should be sorted as soon as possible so that owners don't have to fiddle with an app. They can just roll up, plug in and start charging. I'm also unsure if this car will qualify for any free charging credits. I know that Audi has done two different programs so far. So the Audi e-tron, I think, got 1,000 kilowatt hours for free. The Audi e-tron GT got three years of free charging, or at least three years of 30 minutes fast charging. I'm unsure if that will continue here for Q4 e-tron, or if this will follow the unlimited three years of free charging that ID4 has. So this is something we'll be keeping our eye on, of course. Because, you know, charging, if DC fast charging, you don't really do it that often. It actually, for most people, won't make a difference, but also for some people who don't have home charging and have the time to DC charge their cars all the time, well, this is a serious expense that can add up. Let's look at some more closer details down the side of the car, shall we? So coming in here, you have your windshield with your driver assistance camera inside of it a rain or light sensor, for example. Windshield wipers are great. I actually tested them today. Look at this heads up display. It's so cool. I'll try and show you that inside. Again, this is, there's a lot of features on this car that are not on ID4. It's, I keep making this comparison to ID4 because they really are the same cars underneath. But I think this Audi gives off a different presence, a different character, and there's a lot more functionality here. And a lot of the issues people have had with ID4, I think are solved here in this car. And then some, of course, actually aren't. So my impression, or at least my understanding, is this car won't have any massaging seats, for example, which is available in the mid-spec and up ID4 in the US. So there's, you know, some trade-offs, I guess. I really like the massaging seats. I will say these seats are way nicer though and a lot more comfortable. 
Door handle, of course, is a one of these touch sensitive ones. So if you put your hand behind, it will unlock the car. If you put your hand here, it will lock the car. The doors, yeah, they're solid, solid doors. And you get this nice e-tron logo on the ground that lights up. This one being an S line inside here, we have a little S uh, badging. Let's take a look at the door cards and I'm gonna immediately show you something everyone's gonna be happy to see. We have front and rear individual window switches. Remember how I said there's some things here that are fixed from a lot of people's complaints on ID4? No question here. Also, take a look at this little compartment. This is quite nice. They say it's enough to hold like a one liter bottle of some kind, so like you could put your, your bottle in there. You have another nice storage area down here, your trunk controls. That's a really nice door card. Up here, of course, lock and unlock, memory position for the seating. Here you have your seat controls, so you can go up this way, so you can raise the front and back independently. You have a backrest, forward and back, so you can go like this, of course, and then you have four-way adjustable lumbar, and then the massage function in some Audis is right in the middle, but this one doesn't have it, and I'm told we're not gonna get it in the US. But this could, of course, change because we haven't seen the US spec cars yet. Metal pedals down here, which is really nice. You have your lighting controls here. Of course, there's a poor weather light or an all weather light as Audi might call it. And this is unique because ID4, I'm trying to think, also does have this. So maybe it's not unique. Rear fog, of course, being a Euro car. I don't know if we'll get this in the US. Um, we'll talk more about the interior, but while I'm, on, while I'm thinking about it, these air vents, by the way, are great. However, when you're turning the steering wheel a certain direction, it's such a big wheel that I noticed the mid-turn, I was actually getting blocked off from air. Because <laughs> I was sitting at an intersection with the wheels turned a little bit, and I was like, whoa, why am I getting warm all of a sudden? It was because the steering wheel was blocking the air vent to my face. Now, for Europeans, they typically like a diffused air situation, so yeah, this should be fine. Also, I wanted to mention that we are charging here on a just a regular wallet led a Shuko plug, about three kilowatts here in Europe, 230 volt. However, I'm not sure if this is the same charging unit that will be coming to the US. So we're gonna hold off on reviewing that part of the car until we can get with the US spec cars. In terms of braking system, the all wheel drive variants of Q4 have a bit of a bigger braking system than the rear wheel drive. I am assuming this is the way ID4 works. I think it's the exact same braking system, rear and all wheel. It is possible Audi could use the larger brake diameter on the rear wheel drive cars. We'll just have to wait and see. But the reason I bring up the braking system is this right here in the back, the drum brakes. And yes, it does look a little weird with these cool wheels having drum brakes behind them, but they're actually not so bad. There are some advantages to drum brakes. The first is you have to imagine most of your braking in this car is gonna be done through regenerative braking. So 90 plus percent is my guess, just based off my driving, it has pretty strong regen of your everyday usage will not be using friction brakes. So the drum brakes last better for periods of unuse they also produce zero brake dust into the air. Now, when you have to change them, I don't know, but they should last a really long time. There are a couple downsides though. The first is from a powertrain control standpoint, this car uses an electronic rear differential simulated by brakes. So if you're off-roading, for example, and this wheel starts to spin up, it grabs the brakes in theory to send power to the other side. Um, just the tuning to get this done with a drum brake is really impressive. So to the end user, you and I will notice no difference between this and a friction disc brake. However, the engineers, I think, had to spend a little extra time on the tuning of the rear axle to get this dialed in properly. And let's just talk about these motors one last time. I mentioned that the rear motor, let me just get the parking lights on here. Lights are automatic and one more click. Side lights, nice. I mentioned that the rear motor is permanent magnet. It's the exact same motor that's in the rear wheel drive Q4 e-tron. And then the all wheel drive version just adds the front motor. So you can get a rear wheel drive version, the 40. I think this is gonna come after launch, not immediately when the vehicles are available in the US. And then the all wheel drive version adds the front induction motor. I think it's an awesome drivetrain. I had a blast driving this in the hills. I was really impressed with the performance, the sportiness, and the suspension calibration. Speaking of suspension calibration, this is where I actually have a couple questions. 
In the US, this car's sister car, of course, the ID4, has an all-wheel drive variant that comes with a lift kit. It comes with a 0.6 inch higher ride height. This particular Q4 is looking nice and low and sporty, which leads me to believe it's a very similar suspension setup to the ID4 GTX, which we don't get in the US. So my thinking is, Q4 e-tron is going to have a much sportier suspension than ID4, and it's also going to come with pretty seriously adjustable dampers, so you can go from full comfort floaty mode to full stiff sort of good back road calibration. This is going to be quite interesting. Moving on to the lighting of the vehicle, well, this is just a hot topic, really interesting. So take a look at these lights, <laughs> amazing individual matrix LED lights with projector beam, of course really, really nice looking units. You can actually change this design of the running light to four different designs. And we won't take the time now to show you all of these, but when we get one for a long-term review, I of course will show you each of the four different light signatures. And it might actually be five light signatures thinking about it now. These particular headlights are the LED matrix headlights. So here in Europe, they have something called adaptive high beam, which it not only is on and off, but it will also light up street signs and areas where there's no other cars and then keep the high beams on if there is another car but just black them out basically just to not blind them this feature unfortunately due to regulatory approval is not allowed in the u.s so you can still spec the matrix led headlights you will just get the on and off high beam functionality the automatic high beam functionality it also looks like these headlights have washers which is really cool because I imagine Q4 e-trons are going to do really well in cold weather environments. I'm thinking these are going to be everywhere in Connecticut, in the Northeast, of course, and then also, you know, parts of the middle of the country who really want a premium electric SUV. So having something that's quattro all-wheel drive, quite capable in the snow, our standard tire will be an all-season tire, not this summer tire, which I really love this tire combination. Uh, but the all-season tire, I'm not sure which it is that's coming to our market in the U.S., uh, but having headlight washers is just a really nice, nice thing to have for sure. Well, there's your quick tour of the exterior of the car. Maybe we should take a look at the back really quick. This one has the four Audi rings. This is just the launch edition in Europe. I don't know if ours will have this. I really love this light signature in the taillight here. The back of it looks great. Just looks like a really nice modern Audi, I have to say. Should we take a look in the trunk? This one has the black pack with the black Audi rings power trunk of course look at that quite large honestly very similar to id4 switch to wide view here there's really deep side pockets on either side you can see you have your mandatory little thing here underfloor storage well this is pretty deep and it goes all the way back into here so all the way back to the rear seats this is great these are your charging cables for europe obviously you need a lot more in europe because the car comes with your own type 2 connector you also have this luggage net that can be snapped in right here and i think that's a great trunk the seats do fold down but let's see if they fold down flat shall we so opening up the rear door here it's a little bit dark inside maybe i've timed out the interior lighting let's take a look now and well, I would say that's pretty flat, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's awesome. Maybe it slopes up just a hair towards the end, but that is very useful. Of course, the first thing I would do is rip out this cargo partition, but I know a lot of our viewers like it, and this way I could throw my dogs in the back. <laughs> Let's take a look at the rear door card. No any buttons on this side here. Door handle, window switch, another big bottle holder. There, this goes all the way down, so don't put any <laughs> phones or anything here. And then of course, another pretty deep storage pocket. Really nice use of space in this car. By the way, there are cargo nets back here. Let me get the interior lights put back on, and then I'm gonna test the back seat. Let's see how this goes. Sitting here in the back seat, wow, there's tons of room. It's hard to show you this, but look at all this headroom. Pretty amazing. Tons of leg room I'll show you here in a little bit. The seat itself feels great. I don't think there's any reclining functions, but I have to say it's sculpted a little bit back here too. So if you're ripping around some corners, won't be too bad, I have to say. Taking a look here at legroom again, I'm six foot one and the front seat is set in a comfortable position. This is really nice. Nice seat back pockets here, rear air vents, but even more interestingly, we have, well, climate control is off right now. I have it just for noise, but you can adjust the temperature back here, not fan speed. I believe it uses the same blower motor as the front fans, but you can have three zone climate 
two USB-C ports down here, and then of course a 12 volt outlet. That's really great. Um, you can also lock these controls with the child lock function on the door. So if you have child lock enabled, there's a setting where you can also lock the temperature to sync with the driver. This way your kids aren't making the back seat hot or cold or something. Really big center cushion here, two cup holders. That's quite nice. Also, I love the design of these seats. They look great. This color is really wonderful. It's a very Audi interior, and Audi does interiors so well, I think. This is a great looking interior. Let's take a look up front while we're back here, actually. So we have ambient lighting throughout. You have a whole bunch of different colors you can choose. There's also ambient lighting inside the door pockets and here on the ground, so it really is nice at night. A lot of cars do very poor ambient lighting. I'm looking at you, Model Y. Love Tesla, but man, the ambient lighting is not great. You have a huge dashboard here. This is quite an interesting feature of the car or a design element. I think it doesn't look as premium as some cars with less dashboard, but this also is the same in ID4. You have to make room for that giant heads up display, which takes up almost that entire space there. There is a glove box here. It's a normal size. So you have this sort of carbon or this gray feature going across the bottom here. Two air vents for the passenger, two for the driver. You have your Audi MMI system, which we'll go through and I'll show you some of the highlights. Just below that, this is your air conditioning controls, physical touch buttons, really nice. Below this, you have your drive select function, your hazard lights and your traction control. Three levels of traction control in this vehicle, on, sport and off. And off is true stability control off, which is really nice. Um, if you take a look again at my other video on driving dynamics, I go through this and we turn it off and have some fun on a back road. There is a start stop button. However, you won't really have to use it very often because as soon as you get in the car, put your butt on the seat, touch the brake pedal, the car's on, and then you can just get out and walk away. Great functionality here. I'll show you how the shifter and the volume knob operate, but just in front of the shifter are two buttons here. One is all of your, your quick menus for your safety functions, and then the other one is your automatic parking functions right there. By the way, while we're sitting here, I'm curious, what do you guys think about this steering wheel? Some people love it, some people hate it. I think it's very comfortable to hold in a relaxing position when I put my hands inside of these little holsters here, but I actually don't like the steering wheel for performance driving or really for around town driving. I, I like a circular steering wheel. I don't know. Something about it gives me a premium feeling about the car. I have the most control over the wheel because it's predictable where my hands are going to go. Not to say I wouldn't have a, you know, it's not like it's hard to drive. It's not controversial like the Tesla yoke wheel would be. But I'm curious, what do you think? Because my impression is, well, it looks a bit awkward and it feels a bit awkward to use. Here we are inside of the cab now and sitting up front, you can just see how large this MMI display is. It really is a healthy size display. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but it looks quite nice. Under here, by the way, we have two USB ports, USB-C ports that are lit and a 12 volt power outlet up front, which I don't believe ID4 has. There's also a little phone holder up here, but I don't think it's wireless. I think the wireless charger is on this side that you can slide your phone into, which is quite nice. Um, before we go over to the main instrument cluster, let me just show you around this and the steering wheel controls. So the right hand side of the steering wheel is quite interesting. You have your heated steering wheel functionality here volume up and down, but you don't just have to push it like this. You can actually slide your finger up and down, which is quite nice. Same for track left and right. You can just slide here. You don't have to push the functionality. You have a voice button, voice activation here, answer and end your phone calls. And then of course you can program this hotkey to do kind of whatever you want. There's a few things. One of them, which I find really funny is you can program this to turn on your heated steering wheel, which this button already does. <laughs> so I thought that was quite funny. On this side, of course, this controls all of your infotainment here. So clicking this little bottom left button will bring up a menu. This is where you can slide, of course, here and take a look at everything you need to do for this particular menu. You have a back button to exit this. Then you have your view functionality. This will change your view. There's three different cockpit views. I'll show you those right here, actually. So if I go to, whoops, not car, we'll go to settings, we'll go to display, we'll go to virtual cockpit. Then we have a classic, a sport design. Let's put it on here. This is your sport design. It makes the inside red. <laughs> and then there's the e-tron design, which drives me insane. I just really dislike all of this stuff, but a lot of people like it. And then of course, if I hit view, you can change the viewpoint of this. I don't know. I don't prefer this. I like just classic round gauges myself. And inside of these classic round gauges, 
I'm just going to make them larger here. You have your percentage of power, 0 to 100%, a boost functionality. I'd like to talk very quickly about how this boost functionality works. In regular e-tron, big one, the, you know, the normal, we don't call it the 55 in the US, but this is how it's referred to the rest of the world. That's the big battery e-tron. Uh, you go full throttle and it goes to 100%. And then if you pull the shifter back into S in the normal e-tron, then it unlocks the boost functionality. And this is when you hit the kick down switch, you get full power. In this car, when it's at high state of charge, you just always get boost. So if you go full power to the kick down switch in any mode, uh, but efficiency mode, you will always go into this boost functionality. So can you really consider it a boost? I don't know because you kind of always have access to the power depending on mode. In efficiency mode, when you go full throttle, it goes to about 70% acceleration. And then if you depress the kickdown switch, which is the button at the bottom of the throttle pedals, don't know if you can hear that, there's a little kick down, then it will go all the way to full boost. So I think Audi did this just to keep with the Audi theme of boost, but my impression is, well, it doesn't really have a boost functionality per se. Your regen will come down on this side. I go through a really in-depth review of all of the regen settings and different things here. So take a look at Autospec reviews for the regen driving profiles. On the right-hand side, you just have your normal speedometer. I put the maps in here. You can kind of change these displays to show whatever you want. Also, please ignore the 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That's not the actual efficiency. I was doing a lot of just low speed driving and then shredding up mountains. It's not accurate of what this vehicle can do, of course. Um, so that's your main instrument cluster. You also have a couple different menus you can show from music to just in individual range. You can pull up uh, your charging screen, for example, which is really lovely. And you can even get more information here. It's charging one kilowatt because we're using, of course, energy to run the AC. Uh, you can see this is how long it will take. And of course, when you're DC fast charging, it will show you your charging power in kilowatts, which is another big differ differentiation from Volkswagen ID4. Before we get to the MMI, I'd like to talk very quickly about this Sonos sound system. Uh, Audi claims Sonos did all the fine tuning on this system. And by far, it's superior to ID4 sound system in the US right now. If you like music, then that's almost reason enough just to get the, I, the uh, Q4 e-tron with the good sound system. It's not an incredible system, though. It, it's really good up to about 70% volume. By the way, you can adjust volume by twisting on this little circular piece here, and then it would slide across. I don't have any media selected. You can then, of course, turn off the system, mute it, track left and right. You can also, of course, do this to adjust the volume as well. Um, and it's really good to about 70% volume, and then it starts to blow out the subwoofer depending on settings. In my opinion, though, I'm uh, not necessarily an audiophile, but I can appreciate a good sound system. I really thought this was more than adequate for me, and I usually tick the best sound system option, sound system option and I really, really quite like this a lot. Uh, the shifter itself, while we're down in this little area, works like this. You pull push forward for reverse, one notch for neutral, all the way back for drive. We're plugged in so the car won't let us drive, of course. And then you can pull it back again for B mode. So if you're ready to drive, you just pull it back one more time for B mode. Then you have full one pedal off throttle regen, but it does not pull you to a stop. It just brings you to where, where creep blends in. And then of course, if you touch the brake pedal, the car will come to a stop and auto hold. Another big feature that we don't have in ID4 in the US, they claim it will come software updated over time. But if you like auto hold, then Q4 e-tron is for you. This is what I'm saying. On the surface, it just looks like an ID4 with different skin, but there's actually some real usable things here that are totally different than ID4. And take a look at this heads up display too. I don't know if you're able to see these functions down here. This is very small portion of the heads up display. The heads up display goes to about here, over and down. Sorry for the focus issues. It's an augmented reality. So when you have a car in front of you, it highlights the car. It's really, really cool. A great system, I think actually, and not as gimmicky as I originally thought it would be. Let's turn the car back on here. We have the main MMI system. This is our home screen. Excuse me for hitting radio there. There's three different menus across this home screen. The first is all the way on the left. You can program this to show three 
things of your choosing, of course. Then you have all of your apps that you can go into. I'll show you a couple of them. For example, going into car is really nice. You can change your drive mode, or you can, of course, use your drive select hotkey down here. You have efficiency, comfort, auto, and dynamic. Right now, there's no off-road mode, which I find interesting for it being a Quattro system, so perhaps this will come through an over-the-air software update. We can go into charging, for example. So here we are into charging. You can see we're at 24% state of charge. We're plugged into just a little wall outlet, so only 27 hours. But you can also change your target charge level. Uh, let's think about how to do this. Perhaps I, oh yeah, touch target, and then you can go anywhere from 50 to 100% in 10% increments. Typically, I think you would be recommended to charge this car to 80%. This is where the green fades down into the orange. So that's where Audi's gonna recommend you charge your car. If you go on vacation, of course, though, you can just leave it plugged in at 50%. It's the best thing for the battery long term. So really like this quite a bit because this is a press car and it has to do a lot of driving. We will just full charge it. Efficiency assist is really interesting as well. This will do automatic regen off throttle in drive. If you put the car in B mode, then it doesn't do distance based regen, but it actually works pretty well. It bugs me a little bit. I just drive the car in B mode. And of course there's a range mode that backs down some of the efficiency, uh, or I should say backs down some of the air conditioning. So you can go a little bit farther on your charge. Then of course you just have your, um, lights and vision. This is where you can choose all of your different, uh, for example, uh, light signatures on the front. I'll just, I guess may as well just show you here. So this is number one. This is the second one. This is the third one. And this is the fourth one. So there are four in total. I think, hmm, which one looks the best? That one looks the most normal. Yeah, I think this one looks probably the best. We'll go with this one now. And we'll see if it's confirming on the outside of the car when we exit. Other than this, of course, there's a few different menus, but it's the same exact system really as Big Etron, which I really like. So it will do charge station route planning. It's really good at this actually, especially here in Europe. We'll have to test this in the US, but I've had some time to play around with it here. And I was really impressed with this system. Here's the navigation, by the way. This system's quite snappy. It works pretty well. And you can of course see you know, your range bubble. We were just over here in San Remo. Now, of course, we're in Nice. Amazing time over here in Europe, by the way. Really cool. This is my last event. I fly home tonight, back to the US. Uh, but of course, the videos will be out of sync. So there's sort of the interior of the Q4 e-tron. Let me just show you my positioning as the driver. Here I am in the driver's seat, of course. Plenty of headroom without the sunroof. I'm sure it'll be just fine with. The seats are really nice, so you can see quite a lot of bolstering. So they hold you in really well on these mountain roads. You also have thigh extensions here, which I really like. So you can reach down and pull this front seat bit forward. So this is great for tall people like myself. I really enjoy this. Overall, I think the actual act of driving this car is not that different than ID4. You'll find this in my video. But there's enough nice touches in this car from the sound system to auto hold to really good lane centering. I think it's probably the same system as ID4. I don't know, but it's awesome. Uh, to just the MMI system, the Audi look that I really think this might be the one to get. Basically, if you're on a budget, ID4 you're going to be totally pleased with. And this is not a comparison video, even though it sounds like one. It's just on the top of my head. And of course, you know, if you have some money, you live in a nice place, you kind of want to have a classier vehicle. You like the design of the e-tron better. It certainly is cooler than you're going to go for the e-tron uh, 50 in this case or 40 for the rear wheel drive version. So let's see if the light signature has changed and then I will say goodbye. And yes, it actually did change, but the car just shut down there uh, as I'm walking away from it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tour of the Q4 e-tron. I know it's not our typical video where I have someone filming me and I'm a little bit louder and more upbeat. I'm sorry, I was trying to keep the the echoes down as low as possible, but I really am into this car, especially in this particular spec. I think it looks amazing. I think it drives just as well as any other, you know, as ID4, for example, but there's enough cool features here to justify the upcharge, to justify, if you will, the prestige of the Audi. I think styling and design is one of these ones. Of course, the interior is just so nice on the inside. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Audi Q4 e-tron. Of course, this is not the last time we'll be seeing this car. As soon as we can in the US, we'll be doing our range testing, charging testing. Of course, we'll drive it around 
around and do all of our typical test work. So I'm looking forward to driving this car in the US. This was just a very cool, quick first taste here in Europe. I'm so happy that Audi was able to arrange for us to see this vehicle for the last couple hours. It's been a very yeah, high paced last couple hours, me getting to know everything and of course filming these videos. I'm sure I left a few things out. Once I get to spend more time with this in the US, of course, I'll be sharing more details. Thanks so much for watching another video here on Inside EVs US. We will see you on the next one. Bye bye.